<coughs> Excuse me. A misread. Hey, Michael. Hey, Vicky. I've got little Christmas songs going through, or I guess Advent songs <clears throat> going through my head right now because we're, uh, we're talking Advent, can't believe it, but you know, hey, we are past Halloween, but uh, I was thinking pageant and going through my pageant script that I've written and uh, all those songs are just going through my head. <laughs> the first Noel, once in Royal David City, I'll just name them all so then all of you can have them going through your head as well. <clears throat> but I look back and we had quite a bit of little red going on, so I, I'm excited. Uh, excited to get closer to the season of Advent. We're putting together little Advent bags. I'm excited to do the uh, Advent wreath. Uh, service again on Facebook. And it was neat, just kind of like right now, our time that we get to spend together on Noonday Prayer, we'll be able to do that with our Advent wreaths. It should be, should be fun again. I mean, how can you go wrong as an Episcopalian with candles? It just always lights up my world. I love lighting the candles every week with the kids and children's chapel, and I ask them every week, why do we light the candles? Hands pop up. Let's let Christ be the light of the world. Give everybody another little minute here and <clears throat> let me clear out all of my um, allergies. <laughs> <clears throat> Hey, Amanda. <laughs> Brian, good to have you with me. Thank you, yeah. Um, <clears throat> please keep those comments for prayers uh, coming. Uh, I'll let you know that our reading today from the lectionary is Matthew 13, 44 through 52. Matthew 13, 44 through 52. If you'd like to read along with me, and then we'll begin here after a moment of silence in the Book of Common Prayer on page 103. But if you want to just pray with us, pray with us. It's good to be here with you. Let's begin our worship together. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Saying Psalm 119, Your word is a lantern to my feet, and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O oh Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute to my lips, and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> now our reading from the Gospel is from Matthew. 
Matthew 13, 44 through 52. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be with the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them to the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, have you all understand this? understood this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The gospel according to Matthew. Now, <clears throat> when I read that reading, I just immediately think of value. You know, I, I think I had somebody ask me, and I'm sure you have as well. You've been in some group, and they said, what's the most valuable thing you have? And I start thinking to myself, you know, what, what do I have that's of value in my house? You know, what is it? And I start thinking of all the things. And, and I realize that, you know, I don't, I don't really put a lot of value on things. I mean, I, I'm a sports fan, so I love my TVs. But come on, I, was, I watched the 1994 National Championship Razorback game in a one-room apartment with 20 people watching a little 20-inch screen. So even my TVs, I don't really think, have a lot of value. Uh, but then I start thinking about uh, what people say, you know, when their house burns down or there's um, a climate issue and we have a hurricane or a, or a fire or something goes on and they don't ever name the things. I mean, the things are, are good and they want to hold on to them, but the things that they value the most uh, are the memories, the people, you know, those things in our lives that are invaluable. And I think we discovered that in the pandemic that you know, we were stuck at home with all of our stuff and our stuff wasn't making us happy. The thing we missed were the people. And I think what Jesus does in here, he's talking about the kingdom of heaven and the value of the kingdom of heaven. And he uses uh, parables in ways that would meet the needs of the people at the time. I mean, pearls were valuable. And, and you know, there's a rule uh, with the Jewish faith uh, in Israel that, you know, they didn't have banks. So if you hid something in a field, uh, you know, you buried it. You didn't have a bank. You, you had to go hide it. And so people would die and or family members wouldn't know that they hid it there. So if you found something special in a field, it was finders keepers. So they would understand these things. Uh, but the thing I think Jesus still is getting across to us today is the, the kingdom of value. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is the most valuable thing. And I don't think he's calling us to, like, give away everything. I mean, we are a part of the world, but <laughs> what are we putting our value on? The stuff is not going to do anything for us. But shouldn't we be able to give up those um, things that are harmful in our lives because the kingdom of heaven is so valuable? You know, I think about those things, the overindulgences or waking up thinking, what am I going to buy today? Or, or um, you know, what, am I putting more value on my house or on my car or on whatever it is, on things than I am on the kingdom of heaven? And I guess that's just really the thing I wanted to bring out that I've been uh, meditating on today, which is uh, what do I find valuable in the world? Stewardship season or, or Lent doesn't have to be any of those kind of times. Just where are we putting our value? What are those things that we can push away or need to push away that are harming us, that aren't keep, keeping us from fully having that relationship with God in the kingdom of heaven? Where is your value? And I guess I'll do that as I pray and I invite you to do the same. And if you have any prayers that you'd like to share, please put them um, in the comments and we will lift them up. <clears throat> we'll continue on page 106 of the Book of Common Prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city with the Father and the Holy Spirit. You live and reign now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Lord, we lift up to you those commended to our prayer list. We pray for the Episcopal Church, and we especially pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, the presiding bishop, Larry, our bishop, our clergy, Billy, Joanna, Michael, Patricia, Susan, and Stuart. And we pray for our staff and vestry. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Anglican Province of Alexandria. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the daughters of the king. For peace and an end to racism, terrorism, oppression, poverty, pollution, and persecution. We pray for all of our staff, but especially we pray for Lyndon King, our discipleship coordinator. Be with her as she recovers from her hip surgery and the surgery she is having today. We pray for all of our parish ministries, but especially for St. Mark's name tag helpers. For the safety of first responders, healthcare workers, and those in the military, especially Megan, Sam, Breen, Marshall, Garrett, and Kyle. We pray for those families expecting children. And we pray for all parishioners who are in need, sick, or homebound, and for those commended to our prayers. Cole, Austin, Rachel, Betsy, Craig, Mary Sue, Suzanne, Janet, Adam, Jan, Jim, Amanda, Rusty, Blake, Seal, Judy, Scott, the Owens family, Lori, the Tanner Weber family, Barbara, Sean, Fernando, Billy, Becky, Nate, Lovard, the Wagner family, Ellen, Wes, Eva, Linda, Ron, Tom, Mike, Bill, Susie, Drew, John and Faye Richardson, Kathy, Mary, Tracy, and Laura. <clears throat> Lord, we lift up to you, John and Davy. We pray for Jane and her family, and we pray for Tracy, who has died, and Linda, and Monty, and Barat, and Carol. We do lift up Brian after his fall in Spring Hill. Be with him and heal him. We lift up to you, Kristen and Meg. We pray for Rich and Carol. And Lord, we lift up to you all those things in our hearts that we have not or cannot name. Be with us and guide us in all that we do so that we can strive to spread your kingdom of joy, love, peace, and hope in the world. And we give thanks for those celebrating birthdays and wedding anniversaries. And we pray, do pray for all those who have died. 
And we lift this all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for being with me. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great one.